So my to- my lecture is actually about what we economists actually use music for, because we find that music is a record of the human voice and it's a record of the human experience, and economics is a social science. So economics is interested in the experience of human human beings, individual human beings, human society, and there are there are of course several categories of music, but like there's one element in music which is pure music. which is basically the art of music or the aesthetic of music which you as students of like music are very very deeply involved with and your faculty at the department are in but there's also i i i was looking through your syllabi and i was very very impressed by the fact that you have a section on world music and also in the fourth semester of your undergraduate class uh, undergraduate course you have folk music because folk music is something you know that relates to us our first experiences of learning music actually come from folk music and then the aesthetic of music gets refined so it becomes becomes classicized and it becomes reflected in the classical arts so i am actually focusing on one category of music which is work songs songs which are related to to labor or we might translate it into hindi loosely as shram geet geet about this thing but it's not always about about the experience of what is the experience of the work also the experience of what people do in the work and the pictures show you for example this is uh, this is a famous sculpture by ram kinkar which you would see if you went to vishwavarthi and it's a his representation of the santal migration it's the migrations which led to adivasi people in tea gardens in assam and in north bengal is epitomized in this this is a picture from the great depression showing that the same sort of hardship was experienced by the poor in the US and these are the jahajis who went from <coughs> india and now form the indian diaspora they settled in mauritius they settled in fiji they settled in the west indies and they went as a replacement for the previous system of slavery and these were the ships they sailed in this is a warli painting which shows the adivasi lifestyle and this is actually a 1880 it's a interesting thing if you actually see it full size which is a depiction of ging tea garden in darjeeling and the same sort of like labor migrants had to come some people went to mauritius some people went to assam some people were migrating from one part of the us to the other and some people were migrating from nepal to darjeeling so the human experience is something that is a shared experience and that's why these arts like folk arts of old music is important because you may not understand the language but we certainly understand the grammar of music the aesthetic of music actually reaches us and if we concentrated on what is being said if we concentrate on the human voice in music then we actually understand that no one has actually experienced experienced life differently from us our ancestors went through the same hardships as their ancestors and so this talk will focus on that and i think it will be quite relevant to you those of you who want to build a career in music because it will also show you how the art how the art of a songwriter is born people write songs but to start writing songs you have to be a good listener you have to listen to a vast amount of music then what music is trying to say comes into you and then you are able to speak in that voice okay we are going back to the days of cotton plantations in the us the mississippi river another great river and we come to a very famous voice some of you may be able to identify it or you know this was okay what is the provenance of this song this song is not a spiritual by any means it's actually a opera song this is a broadway opera written by jerome kern and written by a white white musician but it's trying to speak about the black experience and 
the river is taken as something that keeps on flowing. A river is something which is, is endless in age, right? So many people are born, so many people die, so many people go through hardship. Like colored folks who work on the Mississippi, colored folks work while the white folks play, pulling those boats from dawn to sunset, getting no rest till judgment day. All that is happening, but the river is not bothered. Right? And it was important, you have him in your syllabus, you have Bhupen Hazarika in your syllabus. Bhupen Hazarika, as you know, at, in the 40s, he went to the United States and he picked up his, his, his connection was with the, his connect was with the black music, the music of spirituals. And many of his early songs are actually adaptations from what he heard. So, it's the same song. The Assamese version, Bengali version. For the Assamese experience, it's Lohit. For the Bengali experience, it's Gonga. So, it's wonderful the way the song has been adapted because he has taken the epitome of the river but he's translated it to an Indian context. So a person along the Brahmaputra can identify it with the Loeth and a person in the Gangetic plain can ex express it with river and each river is flowing silent. But the river, if it could talk, then it could create change. So we are directly relating the experience of the poor in India to the experience of the blacks in India. So this is how like actually folk music develops its power to speak. You are drawing on the on the shared human experience, not necessarily experience of your country or experience of your lifetime. But your voice can become as powerful as this. An experience somewhat removed, this is basically banana plantation in the West Indies. A lot of the labor that was working in the West Indies was either black or it was Indian. And people used to have to load these bananas all night because bananas only grow in the tropics. But they were being exported to, the, to, the, to Europe. And you can imagine the scene. They have worked all night and it's now early morning and people are so tired and they want to go home. Harry Belfonte again. Look at this line, lift six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. We buy a dozen bananas. These people are loading huge. And this is the Singapore banana which is maybe taller than me. And they work so hard all night. And you can imagine the scene. It's just dawn is breaking, little bit of light. You're tired after one night of work. And it's day oh, let I want to go home. What was happening there was also happening here. People who were leaving Santal Paraganas. They were leaving Chhattisgarh. They were leaving Jharkhand. They were coming to the tea plantations. These are tribal, uh, sorry, in, in an Assam tea garden, tribals. And you will find the same thing in a different different language. So it's so easy to visualize that Chol Minim Asam Jabu, Eideshato Borodu. There's too much pain in this. Let's let's go to Assam because in Assam there are green tea gardens. That means there's work. So thousands of Adivasis are migrating. Then see what happened there. Babu Bole come come. The Babu says, work, work, work. And the Shardar Bole, Dhoryan, catch him and bring him. So the Santals were basically being picked up from Jharkhand and Satisgarh and being brought there. And Saib, the white planter, was saying, Bule Libo Pite Cham, Dharko Chala Uka Ukonsum, Kutel. Jadurum Faki Diye Kothai Giya Jam. And where will I escape? I left that place, I came here, but they are going to 
they want to treat me so I have no way of escaping. It's the problem of labor caught in a struggle. Same thing was happening just across from here in Darjeeling. This is Gingti estate. Workers who were coming, they were not Adivasi workers, they were workers from Nepal coming for the tea gardens. Again, it was. So the same system existed, existed there also. And the same system was happening. This is a photograph taken in Calcutta in around 1872. These are ships, all belonging to the East India Company. And they were carrying these Indian workers. This is the fifth generation before us. They were being taken to Trinidad, to Mauritius, to, uh, to Fiji, basically to work in the tea gardens. No, not in tea gardens, sugar cane gardens. It's in Bhojpuri. Yeah. yeah. the 